Stay tuned, I've got a new haircut, a new colour and lots of a new recent makes to show you. So how are we everyone? It's Cara here and as you know I am so, so mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh I've had a busy week been doing lots of things and as ever been packing in some sewing which I'm really excited to share with you I literally just a couple of days ago filmed an unboxing of the latest Little Miss so and so subscription box so if you haven't had a chance to check that out then please do head over to my channel and click on the, um, the watch of that um, and whilst you're there could you hit the subscribe button? I would really love to inch closer to the 6,000 subscriber mark. I'm a little way off there yet. And I know some of you watching, some of you out there haven't the click the subscribe button. And I would love it if you would. Um, and you know, share your enjoyment of my channel with others by giving me a thumbs up and leaving me a comment. That helps the old YouTube algorithm to uh, reach out to other people, like-minded sewers like yourselves. So, wow, been busy. I've got one up here that I need to talk to you about. I've got one on here that I need to talk to you about. One sitting here and one hanging there. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot going on for sure. Um, yeah, it's been good fun. So I guess kick off with what I'm wearing. Thank you so much for all your, all your lovely feedback. Um, not only on this fabric but but with my button choices as well um, so I'm going to put some photos in here which I've only just taken because I didn't get a chance to take them before now um, and this is the Florence top by Merchant and Mills and this fabric this glorious viscose has been in my stash I bought this from a restash um, years ago and it's just sat there um, and Bit of a wearable toile I suppose um, for the Florence top and as you'll see in the pictures um, and the footage that I'm putting up on here um, I'm really glad I've made this top um, but I'm not sure that I'll make it again um, probably if I stand up actually um, because hey do I ever stay sitting down in my films for too long let me just put that over there a second I love this it's got such a beautiful little um, frill around the bottom here um, and then it extends so at the front it's um, all the same length here um, and then if I turn around you'll see the big reveal on the buttons and I'll talk to you more about that in a moment but you, if I turn around here you can see this lovely um, lovely flounce is bigger it's deeper at the back and then you've got the lovely buttons close up there of the buttons um, and it's it's just lovely the features of it are lovely um, my thoughts <laughs> my thoughts okay i love the fit across here i think it's great it's quite high necked i know that and yet i still made it so it's um i'm not sure i'm not sure it's the most flattering thing i've ever made because the flounce obviously it's an a-line feature probably extends me where i don't really want to be extended but having said that it doesn't actually look any different to how it does in the um in the screenshots so maybe it's the busyness of the print i'm not sure but i do like it and i think i, I do like it and i think with some light colored um so like maybe some light colored linen trousers and this um, lovely gray color or you know white linen trousers in the summer i, I think will help to, um tone it, tone it out so it's not going anywhere. It's going to sit in my um, sit in my collection of tops. Um, it is such a lightweight fabric that if we have a similar heat um, this year to we did last year, I will be reaching for this top regardless of um, whether it makes me look wide or not. And I have to say, I think with some cute shorts um, or something. Um, in fact, some nice white capri short, um, you know, uh, three quarter length trousers. I think I've got some of those in my um, in my summer wardrobe. I think that would look pretty nice. So it's it's a it's a I like it, but it's a maybe. Um, and thank you for all of your lovely views on the buttons. There's an option between a pigeon wishes and the um, the flower that I've gone for. I probably didn't give you all the right advice before I asked for opinions. 
because actually almost no one went for the buttons that I've chosen. Um, and mostly because people were concerned about the usability of the buttons. But um, I didn't make the button, pla button placket um, usable. So it's all sewn down. I mean, it, why would anyone want to have a button placket with purposeful buttons at the back other than to get in and out of it? So what I did on this version is I, um, I checked the placement of the buttons um, and made sure I could get it over my head without needing to undo a button because I just thought that was going to be a faff right there. So I did. I, I just sewed the button placket down and just stitched the buttons in. Um, this, this is exactly what I did on the recent Hinterland um, dress as well. Um, so and I just think, uh, I mean, I can't turn around and talk to you at the same time, although I have just done something similar to that. But um, I, I felt for me, the Pigeon Wishes buttons, although bang on in terms of colour scheme, just blended in too much. And I think if you're going to have a button placket, you want to make sure people know why it's there and it's to show off some of the fancy buttons. So that's what I've done. Um, and uh, yeah, so make number one, loved it. Actually, the instructions were pretty good. It's it's finished with a bias binding here. Um, just for reference, guys, um, I know I did this incredibly badly in my previous um, video. I am 39, 32, 42, um, and I size down to this, so I think this is a medium that I made. Um, again, check the, the, the ease. So when you look at your body measurements versus the finished measurements, the difference between the two is the ease, and there was a lot of ease in this top. And because I knew it was gonna be quite boxy anyway, I definitely wouldn't have wanted to have had the amount of ease that would have been in um, the large, which is the size that I should have made. Um, it actually came re together really, sat it was a very satisfying make, not least because it's just a top. Um, just, I forget sometimes how quickly these things can come together, but you know, I'm a very fast sewer at the best of times. <laughs> Yes, I do so very quickly. And lo lots of you always comment, you're like, how, when do you find the time to, to sew as much as you sew? Um, I, don't, I honestly don't know. I just, I just do. I, um, but don't forget, although I have the noisiest husband at times, um, and he's only saying hello to the dogs or hoovering or masking up the kitchen. I mean, what is a girl going to do if the husband decides to paint the kitchen? You know, it's a tough decision to let him do that shocking that he did it at the same time as me trying to come trying to vid film a video i mean come on <laughs> so i in other words i have a husband that doesn't mind he actually likes to cook he likes the hoover he, he likes to do his chef of the housework and diy and stuff so what's the girl gonna do i gotta sell <laughs> i do love these colors look at these colors it's just like summer in a top i really and i'm really Above all else, actually, I'm really glad to have this. I don't think it's got bus starts here. I'm just, above all else, glad to have this fabric out of my stash and onto my body or in, into something of sorts. So I'm just gonna have a sip of tonic water. I promise it's not gin and tonic, it's just tonic. Oh, it's there. Oh, it's good stuff. So, what else have I been making? Which one shall I reach for next? Let's go for, let's go for this one. This beautiful French, uh, loop back French terry. Um, I, I think it might be really dark navy, but I've been wearing it with black leggings. So I'm gonna go with that. I think I've got a, a splodge of avocado on it this morning, um, which is a bit annoying, but I love this. This is a Molly dress. Um, and the Molly dress is from the first of the Sew Over It ebooks. Um, I've made a, a lot of Mollies, um, not least, as you know, my daughter is called Molly, and I believe it is the law to make patterns that are called after your son or daughter. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love this. Um, I'm not going to put it on for you, but I have taken um, a picture here. And actually, the picture I've taken here, um, they, I've actually taken the dress in a little bit since then because then actually I forgot that it comes up actually quite generous on the sides on me. Um, so I've actually taken it in, in fact I'll show you, because so I've taken it in not once but twice because I put it back on this morning and thought, no, nah, still need to take it in a bit more. So, um, uh, I can't see the original stitch line. Uh, well, the original stitch line, sorry, would have been because I overlocked it. And then I took it in here 
and then I actually took it in again here and didn't change my threads so you can see actually at the base here I've taken it in a good inch inch and a half so um, and I think it's just personal preference really as to how you would like it to fit um, and also the sort of fabric so I found that this French de French Terry's got um, a little bit of movement to it um, and therefore in order to stop it sort of um, ruching up a little bit you know creasing a little bit when I'm wearing it I just want to take it in so it's a little bit ta more taut um, but it is a super simple make I love it um, it's got really easy grown on sleeves um, to this point and then you you put the the bottom half of the sleeve on in the flat and when you're using a stripe that means you can have some fun with the stripes here as I have done and with the neckline too um, I love this uh, and you know when I make something like this it reminds me of how far I've come in my sewing journey because when I made this I couldn't work out for head nor tail of me how Lisa had done the, the stripes the other way because this is um, cut uh, off grain um, in order to get the stripes to go vertical so when I've made this in the past the stripes are going around um, which is fine it doesn't matter which way around you do it but this time I knew that I wanted to do it this way around um, and I've worn this two or three times already it's just super snugly I can absolutely see why it's been so popular um, I don't think you can get this you can't get this as an individual pattern it is in their ebook but I still think the first ebook that so so over it did is the best one and it's my capsule wardrobe it's got some amazing patterns in it um, you'll hate me for saying this but it was recently 50% off um, which is an extraordinary bargain so I, I'd say so, sign up to the newsletter so over at newsletter or something and they'll inform you of the sales because they do have sales reasonably often actually um but yeah love this absolutely yeah, delighted to have it and i've always wanted to have a cream and black stripe um top like this um i've got i have got one that i bought from mint velvet um a long time ago and i really love that too and so i just think it's going to be a really versatile piece for me in spring and summer in fact all year round so absolutely chuffed with that okay so I switch sides I thought that was easier because the, the light is behind me and I can see it sort of haloing behind me there so let me talk to you about um, what is on my mannequin because this is going to be or, or was going to be a honey blouse now as you can see I've got the main bodice constructed just here um, uh, I've got I've got the the basically yeah I've got the main part of the shirt completed I've got the the collar here um, with the lovely frill around it and I did decide sorry that way around did decide to go for the contrasting collar in the end because I just thought it added a little bit something I then and I knew this already I mean I I, I just I question my judgment sometimes then I got to this stage and I thought oh, I'm just going to pop it on my mannequin make sure it's going to fit all right and it is it's going to be absolutely fine now I've obviously had to change things slightly because I only had a meter of fabric as you're aware so I was going to be all right up into this stage I've got a um, slightly different version of the sleeves obviously I haven't gone from the frill I haven't I'm not going for the bells and whistles on the sleeves etc like that and then I thought to myself well I like to wear my blouses more open having said that this is a very closed shirt but look what happens I'm just not I'm not comfortable with that now I appreciate my overlocking which I think you can just about see there so I've got variegated overlocking on my um, on my overlocker at the moment and that is how they have you finish the edge don't get me wrong I could have folded it over once folded it over twice and then I'd have a neat seam but I didn't because that's you know that was the instructions but what's really bothering me is the inside of this fabric is white um, and so when I wear when I what I wanted to do was to wear the blouse open you know like this uh, something like that which is what I kind of do on my other version and I'm just not that I'm just not that into seeing this um, white fabric there um, let alone the overlocking. The overlocking I probably live with and I'm not even sure if you were um, unless I told you about it I'm not sure you'd even notice that but this definitely would bug me. Would it bug you? I'm, I'm curious. In fact I'm curious about this fabric altogether 
Um, I don't have a Microtex needle, so that I know that's my problem. Um, I'm not even sure I probably had the, the most brand new needle onto my sewing machine. But this has pulled a lot, and it's pulled where I haven't even been sewing. You won't be able to see it, but there is there is threads pulled through this a lot. Um, not enough that I would worry about it, but it's very frustrating because it's white on the back. When when you have an unfortunate pull, it's white. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, if it happens somewhere like significant, I would literally use a, a black Sharpie pen or something and, and, you know, eliminate them. But for a fabric godmother fabric, um, which I've not used before, I'm a bit, oh, a bit frustrated by that. I am more frustrated by what I've decided to do or what, what the finish of the neckline would be with the white on the inside. So I am going to change it all together, um, which I'm quite excited about actually, because I really, I'm really looking forward to having this finished. I mean, look at that. How much fun is that going to be with a pair of black, black jeans? So what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to curve the neckline here and take quite a significant amount out. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it on there. Bear with. Let's see. Do you remember I did something actually similar to the Anthea Allen, didn't I? Um, to give myself a bit more. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So I'm going to. I'm actually going to um, scoop that out and simply finish with it with a bias binding instead. It'll actually look a bit more rounded than that. It's easier for me to. Um, but even if it did come out V, that would probably be very straightforward to do. So that's what I've decided to do on that um, and finish it in the same way as the Anthea Allen um, would finish as well. Um, I have a very exciting video coming up in a few weeks time um, or maybe sooner. Um, so I've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole with some, um, some designers from um, across Europe and France in particular. Um, and I've got, I, I have, I'm waiting a delivery of some very exciting patterns to turn up, which are something different altogether. And so I've taken inspiration from one of those patterns for what I want to do here, um, which is super cute. So I can't wait to share that with you. I've got some visions of the sort of video I want to create with that. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm looking to do some sort of, I don't know, boutique stroke Cezanne, stroke jewels, stroke mint velvet kind of um, uh, inspiration patterns and ideas for spring and summer. So I can't wait to share those with you. Um, but I think it, what I've got in mind for this blouse will fit really well into that sort of mindset. The length on this um, is pretty good. I appreciate you can't see the length there, but it's going to come down um, to my um, high thigh, I think. So not exactly long, but definitely not cropped. Um, but yeah, so it's work in progress, and I kind of I, I actually stopped at this point um, to give to consider my next steps actually, because um, I, yeah, I didn't want to rush into something. I thought no, give it some time, move on to a different project, which is most unlike me. Normally I'm a completer finisher. I do like to complete and think finish things. Um, it's a shame about the the um, the collar and so on, but. There is no point in me making something in a such beautiful fabric that I am not going to wear. So change it whilst I can, I reckon, I think. Um, so let me know what you think, though. Um, what would your ideas be? Um, I'm likely to be working on this today, but I'd still like to um, gather your thoughts on that. That would be very exciting. OK, then the final um, the final item um, is the most hot off the press make, and that is the Hinterland dress. Um, from So Liberated. Now this is, um, thank you if you've watched my previous video, but if you, if you, if unboxings isn't your thing, I've included this here because not everybody wants to watch an unboxing video, but I have devoted a whole video to this um, amazing dress. Um, this is uh, provided to me as part of my ambassador role for Little Miss So-and-So, and this is made in a viscose linen, which is 70% uh, viscose, 30% linen. Um, no, the other way around. Oh, one or the other. Um, uh, yeah, no, that must be right. No, no 70% linen, 30% viscose, because it does feel more linen-y than it does viscose. But it gives it a lovely drape. 
and I adore this colorway. Um, and as you can see, I've had a play around with the um, the pattern, or the the stripe placement here, just to get a bit it a bit of fun. This was a lovely sew, um, not least because the fabric is so, so well behaved um, after some of the drama of <laughs> of um, the. The, the pulling of this fabric this fabric just did exactly what I asked it to um, and the pattern came together really really easily um, it was really nice to be working on something where you, you know summer is on its way so I've started this up here and um, I was uh, I was taking pictures of this just a couple of days ago because I only just finished it and I really love it it's actually a really nice weight fabric so I think if you were wearing um, you could layer this up underneath you could pop some thermals on for sure um, you could easily put a lovely jumper over the top of this just with the skirt part um, out, out of the bottom um, because actually it's a it's actually a nice weight fabric it doesn't necessarily feel summery although it is summery but I'll, I'll obviously put the footage in here absolutely love this um, and there are lots of different versions of the hinterland what I didn't mention on my video, um, this is actually a, um, a faux button, pla button placket. It's not in the pattern. You actually make um, you actually make the buttonholes, and obviously, but goes over my head. Um, but you can also omit the um, the button placket altogether and just have a straight front as well. And if you were to do that, actually, this would be a really quick dress to make. Um, it's finished with a bias binding. It looks quite nice on on the back here to have that um, variegation there of the the bias binding. Um, and you can, and because you can make it sleeveless, there is two different bodices. Um, when you cut out the pattern, you got a bodice with sleeves and a bodice without sleeves. So the arm side is marginally different, but you just finish the arm side with bias binding as well, which actually can be really quick to do. Um, so yeah, it could actually be really quick because it's just two re rectangles that are gathered into the bodice um, bias binding. Job done. Um, I, I did put waist ties on mine. I also added pockets. Um, but again, those are things that aren't necessarily, <laughs> again, but change the pattern placement. Not that anybody will ever see that, but I will. So I liked it. Um, but yeah, it's a really lovely dress. So I've had quite a few busy weeks really, which is lovely. And as I look at my fabric stash, which again, isn't massive, um, I might take a picture and pop it in here. I might not, depending on whether I remember. Um, but as it as I speak, apart from finishing this, which I don't think is going to take me long, I haven't got anything um, ready to go. Nothing cut out and ready to go. But I have got some very exciting plans. So I think probably my next video is going to be um, these, uh, yeah, the create the look um, or sew the look or create the look um, video, which is going to take me a little while to orchestrate. But I'm looking forward to do that. But anyway, it's been lovely to catch up with you. I hope whatever you're up to, you're really enjoying it. Hope you get some sewing time in. And I hope if you're in the snowy end of wherever you are, that you're either enjoying it or sitting, um, toasting by a fire, or at least I've got the central heating on because it's mad in England right now. There's all sorts of things going on weather-wise. But stay safe and well, everyone, and I'll see you again next time. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Thank you.